Let's begin the conversation, everyone. So last week, it was muted at the president, Mohamed Buhari, will present the 2020 budget to the joint session of the National Assembly. And he did just that today as planned. It was a document he tagged a budget of sustaining growth and job creation with an aggregate expenditure of 10.33 trillion naira. In his address to the lawmakers, President Buhari told them that the budget, which has an oil benchmark of $57 per barrel, is designed to ensure fiscal consolidation and strengthening of the nation's economic environment, as well as the improvement of capital inflow. According to the president, $2.46 trillion is proposed for capital projects with emphasis on the completion of as many ongoing projects as possible instead of starting new ones. 2020 budget is expected to accelerate the pace of our economic recovery, promote economic diversification, enhance competitiveness, and ensure social inclusion. We are optimistic of attaining higher and more inclusive GDP growth in order to achieve our objective of massive job creation and lift many of our students out of poverty. A lot to talk about on, on this budget, which it will determine a whole lot uh, in the life of so many Nigerians. This is going to be the first budget of the second term of President Buhari and his team. So how does this uh, document fare in terms of the spending plans, the, uh, the, the predicament of the nation, the economies of, uh, of our lifestyle and the food for on the tables of many Nigerians? Can this actually be a budget of sustenance of growth and job creation? And how much of jobs can be created? Let's break this down all for you. Let's talk to those who are in the know, experts in this area. Dr. Obadiah Melafia is a former deputy governor of the Central Bank and a former presidential uh, candidate in the 2019 general elections. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ob uh, Melafia, for joining us. He joins us from our Buddha studio. And from Maryland in the United States is Mr. Sean Onigbinde. He's a co-founder and a lead partner at Budget, uh, experts in uh, uh, budgeting issues. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Let me come to you, uh, Dr. Melafia. The president broke down the performance of, uh, uh, of the 2019 budget before he went into uh, the 2020 budget. And when he was doing all of that, he, he spoke about the fiscal performance of that budget. He, he spoke about the capital uh, spendings and how it performed. He spoke about uh, the growth of the economy and how Nigeria w uh, uh, went from recess uh, to what is called uh, a sustained growth of the economy. From all of these, uh, Dr. Melafia, do you see what the president presented today as something, as a document that gives hope to Nigerians in terms of the plans? That's surprisingly a very difficult question for me. There are aspects of this budget that I find interesting. There are a lot unsaid in this budget, actually, that worries me quite a lot. Now, it's not enough to pick up issues like capital expenditure and explain it uh, as to why it's not performed that well in the previous year. Um, and then you, you feel that having done that, you've reviewed the whole of the performance of the last budget. No. Um, you know, capital expenditure was actually uh, only 30% of the whole budget. And so you can't just explain just 30%. I mean, there are a lot of other issues with this budget, the preceding budget. In terms of budget performance, we need to develop a strong and rigorous culture of, you know, assessment of performance uh, of the budget. In fact, it ought to be a, 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 an appendix to the new budget proposal. And so I, want, I would have wanted to see more rigorous analysis of the performance of the last budget. And the thing is that the delays and all those things really have been very unfortunate. 
Another thing that worries me about this budget is that, yes, it's supposed to be a budget of uh, focusing on growth uh, uh, and recovery and so on. Uh, but you don't suddenly increase taxes through VAT at a time of very fragile recovery. Don't get me wrong. In fact, our VAT is among the lowest uh, among our comp comparators. Uh, I'm told the average for Africa, our continent, uh, is actually more like 16, 17%. In our Francophone countries, it's actually 18%. All our neighbors, VAT is actually 18%. So, and Ghana reduced theirs, I think, from, uh, from I think, from uh, 8 to something like 7.5 or something like that. Uh, so they were much higher than now. So it's not too bad. For me, the issue is the timing. At a time of very fragile recovery, that is not the very moment in which you, you increase taxes. You are going to kill businesses that are struggling, uh, really struggling in these times to, 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 to make ends meet. And uh, so you are likely, and I know there's a kind of desperation on the part of the government to raise revenue. Uh, and the mindset is more focused on directly raising revenue rather than creating the enabling environment that will bring collective prosperity and allow, you know, businesses to be able to develop the kind of revenues that government could tax. And it's, it's a lot of more work than simply just directly focusing on how to desperate effort to raise revenue. Uh, that's not good enough. And of course, this reference to job creation, uh, it is mentioned as an objective, but there is nothing in the rest of the president's uh, presentation that even elaborates on job creation. This situation today is very dire. We've mortgaged the future of our young people. They are becoming extremely desperate. And the current environment with the tension, with, you know, the geopolitical uncertainty, with some of the, I'm sorry to say, very divisive policies uh, of the government have, you know, created a lot of geopolitical uncertainty and, you know, destroyed the kind of confidence that we need to sustain long-term growth in the future. And then we haven't heard much about what they're going to do next in order to enhance bu budget performance. Having said this, I'm happy that at least it's been presented today. Uh, it's, it's very exciting. And, and kudos, actually, the, to the current leadership of the National Assembly. They put the pressure on the executive to make sure that the budget is passed, is, is, dis, is presented today. And of course, they've gone ahead to give 31st of October as a deadline for all MDAs to come and defend their budget in the National Assembly so that come 31st December this year, we would have finalized the appropriation of the 2020 uh, you know, budget and it can start operation from All right. the first uh, Dr. Melafia, let me, let, me get, um, let me get your Onigbinde into the conversation now. Uh, Mr. Onigbinde, uh, you and your team have rigorously, vigorously worked on uh, the issue of uh, Nigeria's budget. And in comparison, this is going to be the fifth or so budget of President Buhari since assuming office since 2015. If you look at what is presented today, what comes out to you as a major uh, 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 difference from all of the other budgets? Um, number one, we have to look at the value-added tax. Um, the value-added tax is growing from 5% to 7.5%. Um, so that's something that's major. And then let us forget that 85% um, of value-added tax is actually distributed to the state. So this is not a major win for the federal government. Um, but the 2.5% also has a bit of clause. Uh, President Mohamed Buhari said that businesses with less than 25 million naira would not be allowed to register for VAT. So technically, that means if you make a turnover of less than 25 million, maybe you, you, there will be a framework for a VAT reform. I think that's something that I really, really, um, I'm really excited about this. The second thing is to look at the revenue projection. It still looks a bit overly optimistic. Um, 
in the same budget speech, as in between January and June, the entire revenue of the federal government was two trillion naira. Now, in this period, the, for even six months of this year, we made two trillion naira in revenue. The federal government is budgeting eight point one five trillion naira for next year. That sounds very, very overly optimistic. And you can see that there is a whole lot of line, budget line items in the in what I call the one-off line items. I'm sure we will see that as the details come through. Things like you are expecting more money from privatization of public assets, recovery of looted funds, funds that you're expecting from independent revenue, or maybe the sales of um, equity in the joint ventures of the oil, of the of the of the oil production. So all of that we're still going to see the details. But this is where the action has to be. We are maxing the best that we can get from CIT, which is the company income tax, or from the value added tax, or from the customs revenue. We need to start looking at the other line items that we keep using to pad this revenue position year in, year out, but we never see the performance of it. The last part of it is also the capital expenditure. There's a bit of slowing down in capital expenditure as we go along the way um, itself. And, and it's because we, we expanding deficit, we expanding debt as we go along the way. And don't forget that the recurring expenditure also go one trillion naira increase this year. For example, you have all right, six hundred twenty-eight. Mr. Nguyen, apologies. Let me butt in quickly. I need to ask you this: from the from the line items listed by the president, where do you think that the kind of job envisage could come from? Uh, I've tried to look at where some of these jobs will come from. He had said earlier, Tom Fora, that um, they they have plans of creating about a hundred million jobs in ten years. In all of it, the document that he uh, the, he presented today. Does any of uh, that come out to you? I mean, if if you look at the document itself, um, we must not be we must not think that only the thing about the budget is to talk about um, um, transparency um, and look at the numbers alone. We must also pay attention to also some things. Um, look at the context of the budget. Number one, he talked about VAT um, threshold. For organizations that are less than 25 million. The reality of the matter is that the size of Nigeria's infrastructural gap, we cannot use the budget to fix it. We have to come to that reality. We're spending two trillion naira on capital expenditure. In reality, by the time the numbers are down, we actually are spending less than 1.5 trillion naira every year. And buying Vilox vehicles, buying cars, and buying this and that, those things are also capital expenditure. So it's very important that you know, the private sector is the biggest element you know, in terms of creating sustainable jobs in Nigeria. But if we are looking at the budget, we are going to be seeing the works, uh, power works and housing, ministry now is works and housing. They're still, they are the ones that still get the biggest chunk of the cap CAPEX. I think around 262 billion naira was allocated to them. Um, we still are going to see a lot of funding going into agriculture. Um, there's been a lot of concern that a lot of funds were put in the previous administration on agriculture, but we we could not see the results. So I think there's much more interest. M Mr. Onigbinde, sure let, let, let me ask you this. I, I know you deal with figures. Uh, for a lot of my viewers, some of them who are not as technically savvy in terms of these figures uh, as you do, uh, give them in a layman's language. Anything to be happy about. Uh, this is a political program. A lot of people want to know how important these policies are and how it will affect their lives. What can you tell my viewers, wherever they are watching tonight, Good news from this budget that we need to work uh, to to look towards uh, to uh, from an average Nigerian point of view. So, from an average Nigerian point of view, if you start a business and you earn less than twenty five million naira a year, you might be exempted from taxes and from especially the value added taxes. So that's helpful for you. Um, number two is also that there's a lot of money for capital expenditure, um, and there's also an interest to do a review of the Public Procurement Act and make it easy for smaller companies to be able to bid for government contracts. That's also coming into play. The Senate president mentioned that. So we also, people also have to pay attention to when the Public Procurement Act is up for review, how do small businesses benefit from that? There are over 11 documents that you need to present before you can qualify for a government tender. So simplify that for small business is also very, very helpful. And the third thing you also have to be able to look into this budget is that there's a more interest on the petroleum industry bill, which is also going to open up in, in, in the oil and gas industry. So the harmonious relationship that we see between the executive and the legislature can be harnessed towards a much more productive... They, uh, no, the president... Industry. Sorry, apologies. I need to go back to uh, Dr. Obadiah Melafia. But it's not captured because a lot of people are agitating that uh, um, what was it called? Subsidy. Few subsidies should be stopped. Well, it doesn't look like that, does it, Mr. Nimida? Before I go to Mr. Bat, uh, Melafia. 
Does Subsidy, it look like there was no there was no there was no comment on subsidy? So uh, by default, subsidy continues. The president looks like uh, he is not interested in removing, yeah, removing subsidy. subsidy. Okay, yeah. let me allow uh, Doctor Melafia to come in here. Doctor Melafia, for you, if you're speaking to an average Nigerian on what this means for them and how it will affect their lives and what they should be expecting from this, what is a biggest takeaway for you from this documentary the president presented today? Well, for me, to be honest, the biggest takeaway is that, well, you know, we're going to have a timely budget for once in a long time. And I think this is good news. Uh, um, and if we go according to the program and the budget kicks off in January, then there's actually very good news. It means money will flow and, you know, a lot of business activities uh, can take place you know, from the government public expenditure uh, process. Uh, so that is, that is welcome news. Um, I like the, you know, the priority being given to job creation and to uh, social intervention, especially in the context that recently the World Bank, actually two days ago, just announced that the population of Nigeria's poor has again increased from 87 million to now 94 million. So well, almost I mean, 50% so, so, uh, of uh, our population. Get, get, I'm confused poor. here, uh, Dr. Melafia. If the government of the day is saying they want to reduce poverty, and this is perhaps one of the biggest monies being spent in the life of this country in several years in terms of social intervention, and we see these figures increasing. What is wrong? What is happening? Well, it's too little. Um, too little, and they're approaching it in the wrong way. I mean, they haven't learned lessons from countries like Brazil under uh, President Lula. They, it was part of a comprehensive human development program. Uh, they politicized this one. Just before elections, uh, you saw them going about in the, in, uh, you know, Wuse Market and other places, and just throwing money, money around to, to, uh, to women and other, you know, local traders. That is not how you alleviate poverty. It's got to be a comprehensive human development strategy, and you, you don't politicize it. Okay, Just we, 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 we must leave it at that because of our time, uh, Dr. Melafia. But let me allow Shewani uh, in a few seconds. Uh, so we go. Our, our debt profile, the deficit of this budget, that's another area that we need to have concern. Uh, are you concerned about what is happening, the figures that you see in the debt servicing and, the, uh, and, and perhaps that the president did talk about the fact that we might borrow some more money, but it's, there's a mild way he said it. Isn't it? In 30 seconds, what are your reactions on the deficit of the budget and the debt servicing? Um, I mean, we are adding 400 billion naira to debt servicing every year. Um, and that's that's just the reality. Um, and 400 billion naira to debt servicing is a real, real challenge. It's something that we need to ask ourselves uh, how, do, how sustainable it is. Um, Nigeria has a huge revenue challenge and it needs a whole lot of introspection. How best do we raise revenues? Our debt in relative time is too small. But well, we have a huge revenue problem. So I think that's where the challenge itself is. Um, I'm not really firm. I think we might, I think we'll do above the current rate of debt servicing. We might even be up to 2.6 or 2.7 trillion. Our deficit is going to be far higher than what we have right now because look at our revenues. All right. It's overly optimistic. Yeah. But I must sincerely thank you, uh, Mr. Sheung Onigbinde, talking to us from Maryland in the United States, and Dr. Obada Melafia, former. Deputy Governor uh, in the Central Bank. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure having uh, the thoughts that you shared with us on the program. So if, whatever you may be watching, if you're an average Nigerian, I have these almost uh, 70 paragraphs of presentation for the, by the president. You can get uh, a copy on Channel Television's uh, website, channelstv.com, to get a sense of what this means all together. If you're expecting more jobs, you need to also look through and look well. That's our beat for tonight on the program. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Join the Bye-bye.